Hey guys, it's Carl here again, and we are at episode two of Ask Carl. So the uh, first one was a lot of fun. These are a lot of fun. There, there, um, tons of questions are coming in. So I'm trying to pare this down to like 20 questions per video. So let me tell you, if you're sending in requests from it, I'm you're probably not going to get a response on the end of the video because I mean I'll take the request, I'll I'll, I'll listen to it, but I'm not going to be you know the requests have there's so many things that go into what songs I do and stuff. So. Uh, your requests are heard, but it's that's not going to make it into the video response. Premium members on my website that are messaging me through the Ask Carl link, um, you don't have to do that. You can just contact me the normal way through the contact form of the page, and I'll respond to you directly in email. You don't have to wait for the video. All right. So premium members, because I got a few premium members asking me questions, normal questions, you know, lesson questions, and, and um, it got thrown into the Ask Carl thing, which didn't. <laughs> Didn't get read immediately. And what I, I did have a question on this channel, I'm kind of reviving this channel where I teach all my like theory and technique lessons. Um, so I have some ideas about lessons that I'm going to be putting up on this channel, but I wanted to get your guys' ideas of what kind of stuff I should be teaching on this channel. I had an idea of kind of like decoding popular songs. A lot of people want to break the theory down of some of the songs that I teach on the song lesson channel, um, like some solos uh, that I can like analyze them and tell you you know what scales they're playing and, and all that stuff so that might be a good idea and maybe giving some examples of some of the premium lessons that I have on my uh, website as well so just let me know what you guys want to see all right so let's get to the questions Alan asks uh, I'm gonna do about 20 questions here Alan asks um, will there be more fingerstyle lessons yes there's actually going to be a lot of classical guitar lessons coming up on the song listen channel and in the premium section uh, of the website very soon. Um, I'm waiting to get a good mic set up for it. Uh, but after that, um, you're gonna see a lot. Aaron asks, how do, you, how do I pick the songs that I do? It really depends on, obviously I see all the requests that come in. Um, I can't respond to the requests because there's just, you know, there's literally hundreds a day. So we're just, I, I, I take them all in. I see if I start seeing a lot of the same song a lot and I know there's a lot of popularity behind it, I kind of gauge how long it's gonna take me to do the song and to how many people want to see it. Um, so I'm not going to do some random live version of some song by a random artist from the early 70s um, that would take me an hour, you know, a couple hours to transcribe um, it, because there's just not going to be enough people want to see it. So it, it, that's really uh, what determines it. But if it's a, I'll spend that, a lot of time on a song if a lot of people if I'm gonna want to see it. So this is kind of like a balancing act. Jacob asks, do you ever play any bluegrass tunes? And if you would, if you do, would you ever do lessons for them and post them? I actually don't play a lot of bluegrass, which is weird because I'm from North Carolina. This is like bluegrass country, but uh, um, I'm open to it. If there's enough requests for it, I'd be happy to. Chris asked, okay. Chris asked, who is your favorite bass player you've played in with cover band, in cover bands with? preface this this is Chris the bass, the bass player for the Vegas rock experience that I played in so obviously it is you Chris you're my favorite we me and Chris we traveled all over Nevada playing in the Vegas rock experience and playing like 12 nights in a row six hours a night it was uh, so we had to you had to like the guys that you were playing with so definitely uh, Chris and Roger my buddies and obviously my brother Ted who was the drummer uh, we were we we did a lot together, so that's by far my favorite cover band and, and probably the favorite musicians I've ever played with, and they're also really good friends of mine too. Some of my favorite people in the world. Marcel asks, how long does it usually take you to pick up a song you're not familiar with in order to do a lesson on it? Has not being able to properly get down a song ever kept you from making a lesson on it? Yes, that's actually the biggest problem for me. A lot of the songs. Um, if I'm not familiar with them, that's it's just trying to mentally memorize it. Like as soon as I got it, the song memorized, like if I can just hum it in my head, I can transcribe it pretty pretty easily. Um, it's it's not familiar with song or songs that I might be kind of familiar with, but have the solos just kind of wander. Like you like you'll see uh, um, uh, like a Billy Gibbons solo that that you know he does kind of the same kind of inflections again, but you will find pinch harmonics and it just goes on forever. It's cool, it's really fun to listen to, but it's really hard to recreate in a lesson because it's just these little nuances that just go on forever and getting them all memorized, like 
people aren't going to watch all that stuff anyway. So it's better to go, oh, he's messing around with A minor pentatonic here and throwing some pinch harmonics in there. That's the better process. So it's stuff like that I'll see and go, I'm not even going to try, you know. Ben asked, do I like Alice in Chains? And if so, what are my favorite songs? I think Alice in Chains is probably um, my favorite band from that era. I know they actually came before. Um, I hate to say that, you know, from Metallica, they came, they were on MTV well, well before Nirvana was. Um, favorite songs of their, and I really like their vocal style and their, they, uh, their, my favorite songs are probably Them Bones, Angry Chair, and then, you know, Wood and Rooster. They're all, I mean, they got so many great songs, but, um, those are definitely uh, probably my favorite band of that era. Hemo asks, any tips for trying to transcribe lead guitar? Number one thing besides, I like I have an ear training course that I'm really putting a lot of work into this year to develop on in my premium section of my website. So that'll help you develop how to hear things without actually having to have an instrument in your hand. You could transcribe it, you know, just by listening to it and know what you're listening to. It's not as difficult as people think. It just takes a little practice and you have to know what you're listening for. Um, but other than that, there it is the knowledge of the style itself is really important. Um, and so that you can know how it's placed around the guitar besides getting the notes right, how it's actually played. Um, so, you know, the more that you play of a specific style, the better you'll get at uh, figuring out the solos for it. Tom asks, you taught us a note for note lesson of Eruption by Van Halen. How long did it take you to learn the song? Um, I can't remember, but it, it's um, the tapping part I've known forever, so I don't, I don't even, I, it's just, you know, as soon as you get the pattern down, it's pretty easy. The intro, the first half is the hard part of the song. Um, I think I broke that down and worked, worked with it for about uh, maybe a couple hours before, I, and then I went and shot the lesson. So I usually, that's what I'm doing. Like I, the few hours before I shoot the lessons, I'm figuring them out, and and, and then uh, I jump in to this, in here and and uh, film them. So it's uh, it's a pretty quick process. I, I don't know a song at the beginning of the day. By the end of the day, I've already taught it, and it's up on YouTube. Kayla Mask, hey Carl, do you have the HD 500X patches for each of your covers that you make, and would you make these available to us? So Caleb was, re was referring to the line six pedal that I use for all the lessons currently and then have since this past summer. And that's a line six pod HD 500 X. And I'd be happy to let you guys have the patches when I, a lot of times I just tweak the same patches. Um, I kind of have a set lead tone um, and I might tweak it a little bit for the song, um, but I don't, I don't do a lot of patch building and stuff, but you know, I'd be happy to do that. Um, if, I'd have to figure out how to do it though. Um, but uh, if I got enough people who had, you know, wanted to do this and had this pedal. Brandon asked, do you still have video lessons to learn Hotel California or have they been completely restricted due to copyright issues? Something else I want to talk to you guys about. There's a few of my lessons the past month that have been blocked. Hotel California is blocked in the United States and I think a couple other areas, um, but is available in other areas of the world. Hopefully this will change. A lot of times it's happened before and they're blocked while they're negotiating something with YouTube and then they allow them back again. So I'm hoping that'll come back. It's not back yet as of this, um, but there's nothing I can do about it. Same thing has happened this week with a few Led Zeppelin videos of mine. Those have actually been blocked worldwide. I'm hoping it's just a thing that'll work itself out. But once again, it's kind of not in my control. It's, it's between uh, Google or YouTube and uh, the publisher of their, those songs. Adita, Adit, I'm sorry, Aditya. Um, I know it's too much to ask, but I would request you cover one of Sigur Ross's or Yonsi's songs if possible. It'd be really great to work as they are my favorite too. So that's from the first video I told everybody that Sigur Ross is my favorite band. Um, and I'd love to do some, create some arrangements. Now I've been doing some new arrangements, so um, their songs would be really difficult. There's so much stuff going on and they have, it's really ambient and the specs. So, It'd be quite quite uh, a challenge to create a cool like solo guitar arrangement of some of the things, but I, I'll think about it and see if I can find one that'll work. Lori asks, uh, "Great tutorials. I would be interested in becoming a a premium member, but do you provide sheet music for your free lessons or other lessons?" Um, the premium lessons are usually my guitar courses, so I have courses on like improvisation, um, technique courses that are I have an alternate picking course that's twenty three videos, and it and it has tabs for all of that stuff. Tabs, there's backing tracks, 
Um, there's all sorts of stuff for the premium lessons. Um, for any of the song lessons, I generally, unless it's in the premium section, um, I don't provide tab because I can't uh, due to copyright restrictions. So the song lessons are free for everybody, the, the kind of popular song lessons, um, but I can't provide the tablature for them even if you're a premium member. But the premium lessons um, do have tab for them, but they're just not popular songs. They're my own guitar courses that I created, so I can do all the tabs I want. Brady asked, from all the songs that you have taught, how many of them can you play from memory? Less than 1%. <laughs> so, uh, not a lot, you know, I, I have to make room for the others. The only songs I really kind of memorize are usually classical guitar pieces. Wilfredo asked, hi Carl, I've been following you for some years now. I was wondering, what do you think of PRS guitars? I think PRS are, are really high quality guitars, the ones that I've played, and they're generally pretty easy to play as well. So I don't have anything, you know, I'm, I'm used to a Strat style guitar, but I haven't spent a lot of time with PRS guitars, but I, I've never played one that I thought was not made well. They're, they're really high quality guitars. So um, yeah, I would recommend them if, if it's that, if you like the feel of the guitar. Lucifer, huh? he asks, what is your favorite Sigurdsson song? Uh, Sigurdsson song, I, I can't even pronounce any of their songs. It shows you I don't speak the language that they do or whatever, but their um, music is so amazing to me. I'd say uh, they're the only band that every song that they've ever done is perfect. Every second of it is perfect. I mean, the only band in, that I have, I love everything that they've ever done. The, every second of every music they've ever put on, uh, recorded. I, if I had to say favorite albums, maybe, it would be Brackets or Voltari. But um, that's all I could... I, I would take any of them. Andreas, I wanted to ask you to elaborate on the answer from your last video, whether when I'm in a band, to which you responded that I'm not good in bands, and he wanted to know what that meant. Do I not like working with other musicians or gigging or have stage fright? Um, it's it's mostly because you know, being in a band is like being in a marriage, and everybody has their say, especially when you're writing the music. Um, it, it's... It, it's generally something that I just, I have kind of an idea, a kind of inter unique musical taste, and it bounces around all over the place. So, so there's always, I, I guess I'm not very good at the democratic way of doing things. I like, I like being, do it, you know, doing it the way I think it's done. And if it's not, I just, you know, I kind of just tire of the situation. So I'm not very good at that. The, uh, he also asked, uh, you stated that you've been playing for 31 years. This kind of intimidates me after playing for only one year. Do you actually get much better after a long period of playing, say, five to ten years? Or do you just discover, discover other ways of playing? First of all, it doesn't really, it shouldn't matter. That's what, the only player you should try to be better tomorrow is yourself. Um, it, it really is not a competition. It doesn't, it, and it, the amount of years somebody plays means nothing. I started teaching when I was 17 years old and I was teaching people who had been playing guitar longer than I had been alive. So it's really about how you put into it, the interest, um, and you're gonna excel at whatever it is, that area of guitar that you choose. And there's always gonna be players that just blow you away and and because they do something different than you like if um joe pass sat here he could make me look like i've never played guitar before in my life because he plays a style of guitar that i don't really do so it's you just have to think about it. it's just not a competition just enjoy the process and don't worry about it um and you, you, if you love something you'll get incredible at it and so just work on that and don't worry about the years you know just it won't matter because you'll you'll find players playing the same amount of time as you and they're they can barely play and some of them are amazing it's just really about what you want to do with it he also asked have ever made a mistake in a video in some solo lessons and i've published it in like older videos and he, he referenced the how i played the solo and sweet child different now in a recent video than the old video yes it, it, it those older videos there's a couple of spots that you know, back then, uh, when YouTube first started, there wasn't a billion videos to see how the guys were actually fingering the stuff. That specific spot in Sweet Child, crazy fast, not really crazy fast part, but just got all these wah all over it. I didn't have any software to slow it down, so you kind of have to do something that's, you know, reminiscent of it. 
And um, so some of those I'll probably redo. Uh, now I have the ability to, I can see how Slash is actually playing it on the fretboard and I can also, because there's a billion videos now available and there's software out there that I can easily slow this section down and get it perfect. Um, so I'll probably redo some of the older videos eventually. Uh, just, just the quality's improved anyway, so I might do that. But for the most part, I, I think most of them are, are, are really accurate and I don't have to, there's nothing I would change anyway. Wes asks, will Amplify come back? And if so, will you ever live stream on it again? Now, for you guys that don't know, I did these live streams shows starting last summer and I went all the way through to about, you know, the fall. And I was doing them a couple of week um, on this website called Amplify. It was a new streaming website and they asked me to be one of their new live streamers and, um, and I did it. And, um, but it was a new site, they were trying it out and it just didn't work out for the site. They, they got a lot of people that like popular YouTube guys to do shows on there and, and I had a contract with them to do that. And, um, it didn't work out that so they closed shop you know they eventually they just couldn't get it going because there's so many live streaming sites that compete with and they just couldn't break into it so they so they won't be coming back i think um not under the guys that they currently were though um but the shows were fun they're just a lot of work for me because it's not just hey you're showing up for an hour i had to have a lot of things prepared to perform um which is means i'm spending hours like kind of getting this stuff together every day and it's just kind of so I, I may do them, but I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna do it. And if I do it, it'll probably be on YouTube. Jim asked, I like the EJ strap, but not the sticky nitro finished. Did you remove that finish or did it just wear off with time? I removed it after I had had the guitar. I'm actually, this guitar I've had, well, next month it'll be 10 years. So, uh, but when I was playing in the Vegas Rock Experience, I, um, I there was a great like guitar guy named Neil Smith in Las Vegas. He has his own line of guitars now, but um, I had him strip all the nitro off the neck, off the fingerboard and the neck, <clears throat> and, and replace it with a uh, <clears throat> tongue oil finish. Um, this guitar is basically, it's an EJ Eric Johnson strap, but I've done so many modifications over the past 10 years, it's almost like a custom shop strap now. But um, it's got my favorite body style of any Fender I've ever had. The, body, the contour is really deeply contoured and stuff. Um, the rest of the nitro on the body, that you might, guys might see worn off and the chips and stuff. That's just from playing for 10 years. But the neck, I, yeah, I, I had it removed. Raul asks, I would like to subscribe to the premium section, but I need to know what all tools you will be sharing for students. YouTube tutorials are fabulous, but there are no tabs, so I, uh, I can't get into the flow of what I do. So apart from tabs, will you slow down and pace out the lessons so I can follow? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the premium lessons do have tabs there and they're systematic, like they're guitar courses. So you start from chapter one and go there. So they're very systematic. There's not like here or there, get, you know, just go from one to the other. Um, so it is a different experience than teaching something on YouTube where people want it done fast and um, they want to get into it. And I don't have the time to really break things down because people usually I get a lot of comments going, shut up, quit talking and stuff. So I just get to it. <laughs> Brett asked, what humbucking pickups did I put in the Eric Johnson Strat and why? Did you have to rewire them in a special way? I just wanted a bigger sound and not a single coil sound. And I, I've been going back and forth through the years. Um, this year, I got them put back in. They're not especially wound, I mean, wired in any way. Um, yeah, the bridge pickup is a DiMarzio Fast Track 2. The middle pickup is a DiMarzio Fast Track 1. And the neck pickup is a DiMarzio Chopper. Jack asks, do you like Angus Young as a guitarist and what's your favorite ACD song, ACDC song to listen to? I don't really have a favorite ACDC song. I think a lot of them are really fun to listen to. Uh, I wish I would have seen them play live. Uh, I think that would have been a lot of fun. My brother saw them play, so they were, thought they were great. But yeah, Angus Young is great. Just tons of energy, just great player. Wrote some, just some really classic stuff. So, you know, yeah, he's, Angus Young is just one of the greatest. Adam asked, what age did you start playing guitar and what songs did you play? Um, I put, started around the age of 10, and from what I can remember, the first song I learned just kind of strumming was Knockin' on Heaven's Door, uh, Bob Dylan. And then I did, um, the first solo I remember playing is the solo to Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton. That's just what I can remember, and then from there, who knows what. The last question, Ivan asked, hey Carl, was wondering if you ever checked out Marty Friedman's solo work. I have. I used to listen to 
in the 90s, I used to listen to his uh, scenes and album and introduction album a ton. So I liked his like more melodic kind of slower stuff. I haven't checked out a lot of the other crazy, crazy uh, metal stuff that he did, solo stuff. So I maybe I should. Uh, but those two albums, I've probably listened to them each a thousand times. They're, they're great albums. So if you guys, it's really beautiful music and a, really a departure for, for him. But he did amazing work on it. So scenes and introduction, those are my two favorites of his. All right, so I'm really enjoying doing these things. And like I said, if you guys have any, any ideas of how you, I'm going to revive this channel, the theory technique, um, and maybe it, it'll kind of be a good thing to uh, accompany me my premium lessons. Uh, so give you an idea of what I'm doing with my guitar courses. Um, but, you know, just have some fun and um, see what we can do with this channel. And, 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 and as many subscribers as we can get over from the song lessons <laughs> to here, it'd be great. All right. So I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.